we now want to create the parse table. For that I gave the state some numbering, so this is state 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, but the, uh, the order doesn't really matter. And I gave some numberings to the rules that are 1, 2, 3, 4. It also doesn't really matter in which direction you order them. And I began to draw the pass table. On the left side in the columns, or in the sorry, in the rows, I have the numbers of the states from 0 to 6. And in these columns I um, I have the actions. So um, we, I start filling it out and then you will see it. So for example, in when you are in state 0 and you encounter a terminal A, then you go to um, you go to state to um, state 1 and that is a scan step. So that's why you draw a, a, a small s and a 1. Because if you are in state 0 and you encounter an A and then you can go and you can do a scan step to state 1. Here if you are in state 2 then you can do a, st a scan step to state 3. So um, in 2 you can with a B a scan st do a scan, step, a scan step to state 3 or you can do a scan step to state 1. So in this column below the A beside 2 I write S2. S1, sorry. Now I want to fill the empty column here and that's for the reduce steps and that means if you are I, I have to take care about the states where you have where you where the dot is at the end of a rule. So for example if you are in this state where you encountered everything you want to see from the A rule then you have to do a reduce step that's why I write an, an R with it. And what you reduce is you reduce with rule number 2. And that's why I write R2. So we have some more um, states where that's possible. For example, here in state 3. I want to I have the dot at the end so I can reduce and I reduce with this rule number 4 where b derives to a small b. So I write r4. Then in this state number 4 I have can do a reduce step with this rule number 1. So in 4 I write reduce with 1. And last but not least, in this step here, in um, step, st sorry, in state number five, I can do a reduce step with those b derives to s rule, and it is rule number three. So I write it down here, and it's every reduce rule I have to take care about. And what I also write down here is that that six is my accepting state. So that's what I write down here. And what we well we have still some um, we have some other kind of scan steps. For example, if you are in state zero and you got a, a non-terminal A, then you can move to um, state two. So I write a two down here and it's I don't need any letters because in this column it's the only possibility that's that we have. So what we ha what else do we have in state zero? We can encounter an S, a non-terminal S, and go to um, to six. And oh, I well maybe to make it clear, this is this belongs to the first line to um, state 0 and we have some other arcs let's see if we are in arc in state 2 then we can have an A and stay in 2 or we can use this B arc and go to 4 or we can use this S arc and go to 5 
So, so uh, this is a five, and this is an S. I, I hope it's not very, it's not too confusing. So um, that is the whole pass table, and if you want to see if you have, um, if you can do deterministic a la zero parsing, then you are never allowed to have uh, to have a shift reduce conflict. That means if you have in one line in this table, for example, if you have one S and one reduce, then in a real parsing you wouldn't know if you should do the the scan or the reduce step next and it would lead to different results. So we don't have any conflicts here. We have we yeah, can do different we can do different shift steps but uh, here's no shift conflict because this step you could only do when you have when you encounter a terminal a and this one when you encounter a b so that uh, these two ones are not conflicting so we don't have any shift reduce conflicts or um, where we don't have any reduce reduce conflicts or something so this one would be this automaton would allow us to do deterministic a zero parsing